You know the green screen and blue screen. You know it becomes the mist-covered planet, deserted jungle, background for a ball, hacked athletic, panoramic, water, What happens when the imaginary planet is already there? The moment you step in the middle of the volume, my glider. You're just, you're just there. The volume is the epic sounding name for the combination of high resolution LED panels. Imagine awesome huge TV screens wrapping around a stage. The physical set design matched to the panels and 3D models plopped into an environment. Wait, that's crazy. In a video game. Then it can respond to camera movement to simulate the real world. Disney Plus is the Mandalorian, a live action Star Wars TV show used this technique. My name is Charmaine Chan, and I'm a lead compositor at Industrial Light Imagine. I've never seen this technology before. Is it physically, like, confusing being on, on this set? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the thing is, like, you're, you're shooting all day, let's say, in the same exact scene. Dude, she's lagging. And like you're at that location. It doesn't feel like it's something fake. It just feels like an extension of a regular set stage. You know, you gotta be careful because there are times where people don't see where the end of the stage is and where the LEDs are. You can't, you can't like tell. Like Coyote and Roadrunner situations where somebody's like running into the wall or something. <laughs> Yeah, we, we definitely made sure that no one's running <laughs> in, in that stage because of that reason. Charmaine is credited as part of the Brain Bar, the group of visual effects artists that operated Five this head. system. One might adjust models like a rock or a spaceship in the panels, while another might tweak live animations like a burning fire. Charmaine often adjusted color. It was funny because it, it, it looked very much like, you know, back in the days when you would have telephone fundraising stuff like on PBS. It was just rows of people with phones Bold ready to go. But instead of phones, we had computers in our walkies. As Mandalorian VFX supervisor Ian Milne tweeted. Wait, this looks crazy real, dude. Is it not? The set crew and brain bar operating the panels let them radically change environments in just a few hours or beyond set as they launched it into hyperspace. My normal working life is very much behind a computer in a dark room somewhere in the corner. Now I'm actually in there with the gaffer, with the prop designers with the set designers. Most people that we would never see because we're cool. in the post-production process. Man, this camera is very exhilarating. But sets like this one weren't just fun for Charmaine. They helped to remove creative roadblocks. As a compositor, we're the ones who kind of take all the renders, take all the CG elements and put them together to make it look like it's a seamless integrated photo. So think of it as like advanced Photoshop, but we're dealing with um, moving imagery. Charmaine worked on this scene in The Last Jedi. We get this footage of Chat, Kylo. It, it's kind of hard for me to tell because I didn't watch the movie. I, I don't know if it actually feels real or feels better than green screen or feels better than a completely made up pure CGI stuff than that. Of Kylo in front of a green screen. Um, if you're lucky, this green screen will be evenly lit with no seams and it's a piece of cake. Oh, that is really That's cool. never the scenario. Spending the time almost frame by frame, making sure we can remove that green screen so that we can put Kylo on top of that. Removing a green screen is actually still pretty hard. For one, it doesn't work with green characters. Yoda's green. Removing one solid color or keying can look good, but you still need detail yeah, it's work. See how these fine branches just disappear? The perspective of the background also doesn't naturally change. That has to be designed into the final composite. Ditching the green screen and projecting or playing the image behind the actors gets you closer, but not quite there. No! Faster prototyping. And You can get detail and an illusion of depth and better light 
Instead of green screen spilling on the actor, you get blue sky and red desert actually lighting. Makes sense. That basic technique has worked in everything from 2001 to Oblivion, but you miss the proper perspective shift or parallax in the background, since it's just a video playing on a screen. The volume tackles some of those problems. You can also adjust light and yeah, objects. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like it's like a it's like a movie, and they're like filming the movie. And the reflections actually work like because a, they are reflecting the other screens no, like filming instead an image. of the green screen, which was especially important for Mando, it's interesting. the show's main character. His whole armor was reflective from head to toe, whether it be his pauldron or his helmet. It was just like. You can't stop saying Papega, dude. If the background is dynamic, it's almost like it's almost a movie on its own, and then the camera is like filming the movie behind. And avoid it's like movie set seeing things being reflected. Um, so creating this volume where we literally could close up the whole thing into one giant circle and have an environment all across these screens, we were getting exactly what we wanted to out of his helmet. The brain bar could focus on details that made the final product as seamless as possible, which was still a lot of work. I would go in and whether it be a rock or a barrel or something, I would try to color correct it to match what was on the set. But where color correction was more important was when we're dealing with the bigger parts of the set. So whether that be the dirt on the ground versus the dirt in our digital scene, and the lighting from the scene affected the dirt on the ground. So then we would have to like, because we had a blue sky and suddenly now there's all this blue on this rock, we would have to color correct the ground and the rock to also have just as much blue as the blue that we just introduced. Again. I don't know what she's like Before like they started shooting, I would have five to 10 minutes to get that all. I mean, chat, the and camera she's using is like 12 FPS. Ready literally. to go. It's either six or 12. I can imagine that there are some creative breakthroughs that this makes possible for, for your job. What would those be with this technology? I'll be honest, I would not be mad if I never have to do a green screen keying or extraction ever again. Why is it skip? Now I get to be a person who's skip. It's a good video. I'm enjoying this. doing the shot. And I can help basically finalize a shot in camera. It just makes it a more um, cohesive filmmaking process. Is that a Vogel file? I don't think so. Is it right in there next to everyone else who's creating these shows or films? Chat. I don't see the the emote uh, scoot in chat. I'll have to refresh. It was, was great good. to talk I to Charmaine that. and Morton. That was actually good. Pog.